Okay. So this is the, uh, the, the generalized uh, minimum mean square estimation. We make no assumption as to the relationship between the sensors and the random variable we wish to approximate. Suppose now we have n temperature sensors. Okay? So this is sensor 1, sensor 2, sensor n. And our goal is again to estimate the temperature, which we will never be able to estimate with 100% accuracy, remember. OK? Now our aim is to find a combination mechanism to meaningfully combine this observation such that there is no other function to be found which bits our combination mechanism. Okay, suppose our aim is to determine or to find a function g such that if we combine s1, s2, sn, the error arriving is the minimum we can we can get. Okay? So x hat is now a function of this g, and our aim is to find this g. It can be a linear function. It can be a nonlinear function. We make no no assumption. So how can we be? How can we determine d g? Okay. In order to uh, uh, proceed, I want to discuss something first, which is the joint density function. OK, the joint density function. Uh, last time I have given you this example, so let me repeat it. Suppose we want to determine the relationship between weight and size of this class, or the, the student at the uh, TU Dresden. OK? So this axis, let's say, is the random variable weight. And this axis is the random variable size. And we have this, for our purpose, it's uh, discrete, but you assume that these are continuous values. OK? Suppose this is the, the density function that reflects the relationship between the uh, weight and size of our students. OK? There is a faint linear relationship between S and W. Now, our goal is to determine the mean of S. Given the joint density function, is there a simpler or comprehensible approach to determine S? OK? We can take advantage of the conditional probability to determine this. OK? We can take advantage of the conditional uh, PDF to determine this. What we do is the following. Since our aim is to determine the expected value of x, let's just say we uh, fix w at something. OK? We, dis we fix the x-axis at w1. So what we get is now the distribution of s. You see here? The distribution of s given w1. Now, if we have the distribution of s given w1, it, it's possible to determine e of s given w is equal to w1. This is possible, right? So let's say what we get is for this, this is the mean. Likewise, if we fix it here, 
let's say the mean is somewhere here. If, by doing so, we can find, suppose these are the conditional mean. The conditional mean changes as, as we move along the w axis, right? Now, as you can see, the, the mean itself has become what? A random variable. Hmm? Having its own distribution. Now, if we take the mean of this one, with respect to w, sorry. Because first, we, we kept w constant, right? So now, look, if we move from here to here, we are varying w, right? If we move from here to here, we are varying what? We are var varying w. So this, the outer part is w with respect to w. OK? Because once w was fixed for this one, then we take another one, then we take another one. Is it clear? So th this is how we determine the expected value of s, when there is relationship between two random variables. Have I confused you, or are we fine? It's OK? OK. Anyone with, with some, some dot? Good. We, we need this one for, for determining the, the expected value, uh, the, the mean square error. OK, so what we have said was, OK, this is x is our random variable we wish to uh, estimate. And our goal is to find g of uh, s1, s2, sn, which is x hat. And the error arising as a result of our estimation is x minus x hat, which is equal to x minus g of, uh, let's just collectively say, th uh, say this as s underscore. This simply means observables. Okay, because they are coming from from the sensors. We can observe them. So the square of the error is what? The square of error is x minus x hat square. And this is equal to uh, x minus the sequence of the observable, g of the sequence of the observable square. And likewise, now the mean of the square of the error is equal to e of and this is equal to e x minus g of s square okay now is it possible to use this approach to simplify our estimation uh, problem? The answer is uh, yes. Suppose we take measurements from all the sensors at once. OK, suppose. We take we take measurements from all the at once. We just sample them at once. So now this sequence is no longer a random variable. Right? It's an, it's observed. We have already samples. So what we have is S is equal to, S1 is equal to S1. This is capital letter. This is a small letter. S2 is equal to S2. And Sn is equal to Sn. OK? This, these are measurements. We have already taken uh, measurements. So it's fixed. So now we can rewrite this equation. Uh, as 
follows. OK, we can use this blackboard. So here, our estimation problem can be described as a conditional, conditional mean. So this one can be described Okay, x minus g of s given, uh, remember we have said g of this sequence is equal to x, x hat. Okay, so this one is x hat. x hat, which is a random variable. I will get back to g of s. Just let's call it x hat given the observables. OK? Now look. Because now x is a fixed term, we can estimate this with respect to x. You see here? Because when this is fixed, the only random variable we have is just this one. OK, so this estimation is now with respect to x. And yes? Ah, uh, OK. Ah, OK, thank you. Let's just re re rewrite it again. So what we have is the expected value of x minus x hat square given, uh, sorry. So th this is what we have, right? This is our estimation problem. Now we're going to condition this one. OK, we want to condition x hat because now we have our observables. Okay, so this is going to be, if you, we condition, we always get this type of expression. So the first one with respect to the inner S and the outer one with respect to W. Okay, W is the uh, variable we fixed or conditioned. So we have here with respect to X hat, and here we have with respect to x. And now we have x minus x hat square conditioned by our observables. Is that OK now? No. Not? Why? Ah, thank you. Yeah, 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 I understand. So here we have this one. Is it OK now? So this is the, uh, with respect to uh, x, and this is with respect to. OK, so this is the, the, the expression. Remember that these are the observables. And this is the random variable we wish to ex uh, 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 estimate, which is the temperature. So this is the estimation target. OK. We assume that this is given. So this is how we, we express. Now, this uh, remember, when we uh, try to determine the, the, the estimation the expected value of a random variable x is described as what? Integration from minus infinity to infinity x f of x dx, right? This does not necessarily be x. For example, if we wish to determine the variance of x, remember, x minus eta x. 
So this is the variance of x. We describe this as integration from minus infinity to infinity of x minus eta x, f of x dx. So no matter what we have, as long as it's a function of x, the random variable, OK? The expected value of this function can always be determined in terms of f of x. Are we on the same page? Or have I lost you? Is it OK? Is everything OK? Have I lost somebody? Is it clear what I want to do here? If I want to determine the expected value of any function of x, x here is the random variable. This one is not a random variable. If the function I have here is only a function of x, the random variable, its mean can be described in terms of this one. So we can substitute any function here, any g of x. So we can say that the expected value of g of x, as long as this g is a function of x and no other random variable, then the expected value of this g of x can be described what? As g of x f of x dx. This one is the PDF, right? The density value, the density value of x. So we integrate this function with the density value of x. Are we fine? So now what I'm going to do is the following. Here I want to determine the, the expected value of this x. It's a function of x's, all the x's, the joint density function of the x's. And this one is the density va value of the x's given the observables. So what we can do is the following. So now I'm going to, following from where we s stopped here, E with respect to x hat of E of x, x minus x hat, given the observables, OK? So this can be described as first we just take this one, the inner one. This you see here. Now we have from minus infinity to infinity of f of this x hat dx, dx hat. This is the joint density function of the observables, remember. And now we have this inner integral. So this is the temperature we wish to estimate. So this is x minus x hat squared given the observables. You need to understand the significance of each one. This is the joint density function of the observables. OK, the sequence coming from the sensors. OK, the S1, S2, and Sn, remember they build uh, x hat. Alternatively, we can write this like this. Is it OK? Does this confuse you? S is the joint density function of the sensors, the observables coming from the sensors. X is the random variable we wish to determine, which is the temperature. 
Are we on the same page? OK. This is always a positive function, and it has nothing to do with the, remember what our aim is. Our aim is to come up with g of x. So at this point, I will substitute this with g of x, g of s. OK? So this is always a positive quantity and ha having nothing to do with the function we approximate or estimate. OK? Always positive and has nothing to do g of s, OK? Because our aim is to determine the g of x. So now I am going to rewrite this one like this. I'm not just rewriting. I'm just substituting. Instead of x, we're going to use g of x. So this is ax x minus g of s, because this is x hat. OK, so this is the square. Uh, sorry, given x, remember, is the sequence or OK, where did I underline? The underline is the, the, the observables. OK, so we have here f of s ds. Now, this is the, the, the estimated square error. OK, this is the estimated square error we have. And our goal is to minimize this. How can we do that? So because this function has, you know, differentiating this with respect to g has absolutely no effect with f of s. So we will remove it. And minimizing this term amounts to minimizing this term. OK? So minimizing amounts to minimizing the expected value with respect to x of x minus g of x squared given x Remember, these are the observables from the sensors. So what do we do? We have to differentiate this now. So the partial with respect to g, because now we are looking for the optimum function. So we have to differentiate the, this term with respect to g of the expected the, square, the expected value of the square of the error is equal to the partial with respect to g of given our observables. So we are going to use the same approach because this is a, a compound term. We're going to have this is equal to ex of x minus g of x given x, sorry, g of x. And then the inner integral gives now minus 1, right? If you integrate this with respect to itself, what we get is only minus 1. Are we fine? 
So here we have minus 1 with respect, uh, as a given the observables. Derived. Hmm? Derived, uh, yes, differentiate. And then we have to set this to 0, of course, to find the minimum error, to determine the minimum error. Again, this minus goes to the other side. What we have is now e of x. So here what we have is x given x. Okay, is equal to g of x, e of g of x, sorry, with respect to x observable. This is very important. If x is already given, if we fix x, this value is always g of x, right? If you vary x, this varies. But it has nothing to do with the function only with the value of the function. I need your attention. You know what I'm, I mean here? x is given. If x is given, it doesn't change g, but it changes only the value of x, right? So we can describe this as simply g of x. OK? So this term is just g of x. And this term is e of, remember, this is with, uh, with x uh, observable, so we can drop this one. So simply x given observables. So this is the function which best approximates x given x hat. That means the function which minimizes our error is the conditional mean, the conditional mean of the, the temperature. Are we, let's just give you an example so that it can be clear. Suppose we just have one sensor, let's say. Okay, let's just try to estimate the temperature of this room in terms of the measurements coming from the sensor. Okay, let's just assume the joint density function can be described as follows. Okay, so we have this joint density function. Okay, the, the joint 
the joint density function between the real temperature and the sensor is like this, k times s times k for zero less than or equal to s less than or equal to, sorry. Let's say this one. OK, so this is the joint density function. And our aim is to determine the best, the function in terms of x. OK, so, so what are, here we have the real temperature value we wish to estimate. And x, s is the, 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 the value that comes from, from the sensor. So the joint density function can be described like this. So this is, this line as you see is, so suppose this is S and this is the sensor we, uh, the temperature we wish to estimate and these are the values of S. So this is X is equal to S. So we have said uh, S is always less than or equal to X. So we are interested in this region. And it's always a positive quantity be between 0 and 1. OK? So we have here, suppose this is 1. And this is where we have s is less than, less than x. So we are interested in this region. OK? We have said the best function which approximate the real temperature of this room, G as a function of X, is equal to what? We have said the expected value of X with respect to S. So this is the, the, the best function. I'm rewriting this one. Okay? The best function that approximates the temperature is x given s. That means given the sensor value, the value of x, the conditional value of x. In order to determine this, of course, we have to uh, use a Bayes uh, theorem. If you remember, if we have using the Bayes theorem, the probability of A given B can be described as the probability of A and B and the probability of B. So in order to find the estimated value, you see here the estimated value, we always need to find the conditional density function because we have to integrate with respect to the conditional density function. So my aim is we use this theorem to determine the conditional density function x given s. Okay, the conditional value of x given s. Uh, can be described as the joint density function. We have the joint density function, it's already given. F of x s. divided by, according to Bayes' theorem now, it's probability of S, right? So how can we determine the probability, uh, the, the, the uh, density function of X? We're talking about density function, please don't forget. If we have the joint density function, F of, if we have the joint density function, we can determine the, the density function of S by integrating this with respect to what? With respect to X. Okay? So F of S is equal to what? Integration from minus infinity to infinity. F of X, S, D, DX. It's possible to do this. You remember this? 
Okay. So now let's just the, our density function is what? K s K s x dx and now we have to determine the the boundaries of integral. Olga is struggling. So the boundary, we're now going to integrate, this is the joint density function. So we're going to integrate with respect to x. So that means x goes always from this line you see here up to this line. So the upper bound is 1, the lower bound is this function, which is uh, uh, x is equal to s. So x at this point it is s, on top it is 1, so we have to differentiate this with respect to, so these two terms are not a function of x, so we can remove them, ks, integration from s to 1, so what we have is x dx. So when I, uh, I integrate this, this is x squared over 2. So we have k s now x squared over 2 evaluated between s and 1. So this is 1 for the upper one, 1 half. And for the lower one we have s squared over 2. So this is going to be k s we have already brought from the previous term and now we have okay this is 1 over 2 we have already and then we have 1 minus s squared. This is correct right? Okay, so this is for f of s. Now in order to find the conditional density function, okay, x given s, so we have to use this one. So the conditional density function f of x given s, because since this is a fixed term, conditional means x is already fixed, so we're talking about really x. So this is equal to f of what the joint density function, the joint density function k, uh, So this is Ksx and this one we have already one minus uh, so this is the the, the, the the joint density function. So what we have, again remember the joint density function goes also from, uh, it satisfies this uh, boundary condition. Okay, they roll is or equal to s less than or equal to x less than or equal to y. So here we have ksx, uh, this two term goes here, and this is ks, and then one minus s squared. So this cancel this one and here we have 2 of x 1 minus uh, this is f of x given given x hmm? we have not uh, calculated the, uh, the the expected value yet okay so now what is 
because our g of x, we have said g of s, sorry. OK, the, the, the function that best approximate the random variable we're looking for, given the observable, is the expected value of x given s. Remember? So this x given s, because this is expected value, now we have to integrate it. And now we have to integrate with respect to x. OK? So we have to integrate with respect to, with respect to x. And this is our function. So we have here x, the conditional density function we have already calculated here, x into here 1 minus s squared dx. And then we have 2 here. We mustn't forget. Again, this function, remember the lower bound is this term, where x is equal to s. And the upper bound is 1. But now, the difference is we are going to differentiate with respect to x and not with respect to s. So we can remove this one. So this is 1 minus s squared. And then here we have s 1 x squared dx. So this is x cubed over 3, right? Integration of x, uh, sorry, yes, right? Integration of xn is equal to 1 over n plus 1. xn plus 1 plus some constant, don't forget. Since we are dealing with uh, a bound, uh, uh, we are not really concerned with c. So this is uh, 2 over, uh, we mustn't forget 2 over. 1 minus s squared. So for this one, we have x cubed over 3 evaluated between s and 1. So the first one is just 1. For this one, uh, for this one we have 1. For this one, we have cube, right? So. Just the final one, and then we are finished. OK, so what we have here, remember, this is 2 over 1 minus s cubed. And then for this term, we have 1 minus uh, s cube, right? And then we have 3 here. So we can put 3 here. So what we have is 2 over 3, 1 minus s cube, 1 minus s squared. So this is the best estimation of x. As you can see, this is a nonlinear estimator, OK? Given sensor values from a single sensor we're just considering, given the, a value from this sensor and having this, having this joint density function, the best estimator of x can be described like this. Yes? Joint density function. I thought you were the one who answered this question. H how do we get the joint density function? Who can tell me? You remember when we discussed the linear uh, estimation, we talked about this one. How, did, how do we determine the joint density function? This is very important. We're talking about a sensor, right? A sensor which measures temperature. So that means 
the manufacturer produces this sensor. It wishes to determine its accuracy. So in a controlled environment, let's say in a laboratory environment, we set the temperature to absolute zero. And then we see, we take 1,000 samples from this sensor, let's say, or 10,000 samples, and then see how it responds. Then we change now this to one degree Kelvin, let's say. And then we observe how the sensor measures. Sometimes it measures minus one, sometimes it measures one, sometimes it measures 0 0.5, you see? And then we change the temperature in a controlled environment and then see how the sensor measures. And then that's why, how we produce the joint density function. Okay, the joint density function, or let's just talk, yeah, the joint density function simply means how often are the values related with one another. Okay, first I keep the temperature, let's say zero degree centigrade, and then measure the sensor. And then I keep one degree centigrade, and then measure the sensor. So this is how I get the joint density function. I change to minus one degree centigrade, and then see how the sensor measures. This way I produce the joint density function. The joint density function is the most important function we can produce when we are relating two random variables with one another, or n random variables with one another. And this is how we produce the joint density function. Any other question? OK, thank you very much. We will take a break. And after 20 minutes, we'll come back again. Today, we will finish the uh, Kalman filter so that next week we can summarize the main aspects of this lecture before the semester ends. Is that OK? 20 minutes break, and then we'll meet.